Okay, this is a quick demonstration of the current state of uh, Bees and Trees uh, alternative firmware for the Mutable Instruments Braids uh, module. Uh, this is version 3Q at the moment. Uh, so what Bees and Trees uh, does is provide um, two internal modulators instead of a single uh, internal envelope in the standard braids. Uh, and those internal modulators can be set to LFO or envelope mode, put under voltage control, uh, and directed to various internal uh, parameters. So what I'll do is just quickly go through the revised menu structure and uh, talk about each parameter. Uh, and as I do so, I'll just demonstrate uh, how it works. So what we're looking at here are actually three do-it-yourself braids, which is why they look a little bit different. Uh, we're concentrating on this one, which is running the Bees and Trees uh, firmware. Uh, you'll notice that there are no jacks here because all the jacks are on a breakout panel down here because I made a mistake in ordering the PCBs for these. So this uh, vertical row are the jacks for this particular braids. And as you can see, there's nothing plugged into any of the inputs. We just have uh, uh, one jack plugged into the output. That's going directly through my audio interface to the speakers, which I'm just recording back into this iPhone uh, for convenience sake. So we'll just bring up the audio so you can hear it. Not too loud, I hope. Um, okay, so the waveform selection is uh, identical. It works just as in, uh, it does in the standard braids. The only thing missing is the QPSK oscillator model, which is right at the end of the, the, the list. I had to delete that to make room for uh, these new features. So let's look at the, the menus. So the first menu selection is uh, for modulator 1, uh, and there's an equivalent set for modulator 2. Uh, and by default that's off, but we can set that into LFO mode or envelope mode. When you put it into envelope mode, as in the standard braids, uh, it requires a trigger to actually trigger the envelope, um, and uh, by default the level setting is set to zero, so you don't hear anything. Let's leave it in LFO mode for the moment. Uh, the next selection is the rate selection for the, uh, for the LFO or the envelope. So this sets the duration of the, each envelope segment uh, or the LFO speed. Um, and you can set that in very fine uh, uh, increments to precisely adjust the speed of the two uh, modulators. Let's leave it at 40 at the moment. Uh, the next selection is the shape uh, the right of the rising arm, or that's the attack segment, or the rising part of the LFO waveform for modulator one. And you can set various uh, shapes. We'll come back to this. That's for the falling section shape uh, and the ratio between them. But let's actually set um, uh, some parameters here. So we'll go back and choose a slightly different waveform, so fold is a good choice. Um, okay, so these, uh, these parameters uh, set the depth of modulation for each destination. So this is from modulator 1, and it sets the depth of modulation for uh, timbre. So it defaults to zero, but as we increase this, you can hear that timbre is being modulated by internal modulator 1 set to LFO mode. So let's leave it at 80. And likewise you can direct each one to um, other parameters including colour uh, and level, so amplitude or gain, um, and also frequency. So you can use the internal modulators for uh, uh, vibrato, vibrato. So let's just hear that. We'll set that off again for the moment, so we can just hear one parameter being modulated um, at the moment. No, in fact, we're going to... Okay. Let's turn the tamper modulation off and go back to um, the, the shape parameters. So this, uh, this parameter sets the, um, the shape of the attack uh, segment of the envelope or the rising arm of the LFO. And it defaults to exponential, but you can set it to uh, other things. So that's exponential at the moment. 
that's linear so you can now hear that there's a linear rise in pitch um, on the rising arm of the LFO waveform and it's exponential on the falling side wiggle uh, sign square or at least squarish it's actually got rounded corners so let's set the uh, the falling arm of the LFO waveform so you can now here we've got a square attack or, or rising arm of the LFO waveform and a wiggly um, falling arm of the waveform But there are more. Uh, there's also BAUF, which is actually the Boeing envelope from the uh, the Bode oscillator mod module, which has a um, uh, it's a, a power function, I think, uh, rise with a flat top. Um, but you can also set random levels. So what this does is use a random number to choose the target uh, level. So this is using exponential curving, uh, but a random target level, linear, uh, sine, or you can just choose a, a flat level which is randomly chosen for that particular arm. So let's go back to shape one and set that to random two. Now you can now hear that the LFO is choosing random levels and sending that to um, uh, pitch of the uh, of the oscillator, and you get a, a random sample and hold effect. Let's increase the rate a bit. While we're demonstrating that, you'll notice that um, it's not quantized. Um, we can still turn quantization on to semitones, but that doesn't have any effect because the uh, the vibrato modulation is being applied uh, after the quantization. But I've added a new um, uh, parameter, which is quantization before vibrato rather awkwardly named but that's the best I can come up with uh, and that by default sets to on but if we set it to off you can now hear that it's playing uh, only semitones so from the chromatic scale uh, from the the random source okay we'll leave it at that and go back um, so yes, yeah, so each modulator has various destinations, so you can send it to Tamba. So now we've got random uh, Tamba settings. Um, color. So random Tamba and color. Turn that back down again. Uh, level. So random levels, or whatever the LFO is putting out. Um, frequency or pitch we've already covered that's what it's doing at the moment uh, but also the speed of uh, modulator 2 can be modulated by the current value of modulator 1 um, so we can actually cross modulate the two LFOs we'll do that okay so now we're going to modulator 2 and the settings are uh, identical um, so let's increase the rate of, of that a bit the shape as it uh, as it is so that's exponential on both sides of the, the curve um, I forgot to cover this parameter uh, this sets the ratio of the rising and falling uh, arms of the LFO or the attack and decay segments of the uh, envelope generator so it defaults to a, a, a ratio of, of 1 or 100 um, percent but if you decrease that it makes the attack shorter than the decay and if you increase it, it makes the attack longer than the decay. So you can actually set uh, 
custom waveforms or uh, ratios for the attack and decay. So let's um, send modulator 2 to the level. modulator 2 on. There we are. So modulator 2 is now running an LFO and that's modulating the, uh, the, the level. And you can hear if I turn that up. fix the uh, the ratio between each side of the, the waveform and of course we can set the shape of each uh, arm of the LFO uh, as previously um, now instead of the meta envelope selection I've renamed this uh, the FMCV because this now controls what a, what effect or what the purpose of the uh, frequency modulation input is uh, is used for. So by default it, it, it uh, defaults to frequency, that is it actually does FM. Um, you can still use it for meta mode to um, uh, change between oscillator mod modules depending on an external uh, voltage, but you can also set it to rate in which case the input uh, voltage affects the, uh, the rate or the duration of the envelopes of the internal modulators or you can direct it to just modulator 1 or just modulator 2. And finally you can use it to set the bit crushing level. So by default the bit crushing is off, that is it, it uh, keeps all 16 bits of the uh, oscillator output but if you increase that via the voltage it will um, progressively uh, crush the bits. So we'll just demonstrate some of this. So let's set it back to rate. Now here we have uh, just a fixed voltage uh, between 0 and 5 volts that will come out of uh, frames. We're just using frames purely as a fixed voltage source at the moment, not as any sort of modulator. And we'll plug that into the uh, FM input. And actually what we'll do is slow down both uh, both of these so we'll slow down LFO1 So this is the uh, FMCV input. We've got a fixed voltage um, going into the FM input from frames and you can see that as I increase this voltage the LFO speed increases. And the same occurs with the uh, envelope durations as well. And if we make that just rate 1, that's just the speed of, um, of LFO1 is increasing, not LFO2. You might be able to hear some clicks uh, there, and that's, I think, because we're using the uh, uh, random level to set timbre. Because the random level uh, changes instantaneously it can cause clicks in some uh, some modes. So what I might, might do is just go back and um, change that. So we'll put that back to linear.
So you can see that external voltage is changing the rate of just LFO1, and now it will change the rate of just LFO2. And we can also change the bit crushing level. So you can hear all sorts of aliasing um, occurring there as we crush the bits down to uh, three or two bits. Okay. Um, the other menu choices are basically as they are in braids, um, source, delay, uh, range. I should say one thing about range. Um, I've enabled one other uh, setting, which is actually always present in the braid source code, but for some reason hidden, uh, and that is LFO range. And what this does is put the, uh, the frequency range of, of braids right down, so the minimum is now uh, well under 1 hertz. So that means that you can actually use braids as uh, an LFO. However, the braids output is not DC coupled, so it won't go below about 1 or half uh, hertz. So it's not really a true super low speed LFO, but it is still voltage controlled and it's useful for uh, lots of things. So I'll just put that back to free. Uh, octave are the same quantize we've spoken about, uh, quantize before vibrato. Um, uh, this one will skip, but it's in the documentation. Um, and finally, uh, uh, drift. So drift before was uh, introduced a sort of jitter or drift into the VCO uh, and before it was either just on or off but I've actually made this uh, scalable so before that was drift and it was fairly subtle but now you can turn it up and it will introduce some real grunge and dirt into the, uh, the waveform, you can hear that. Okay, now let's just play around with some of these parameters. Um, what I'm going to do is um, set up a patch which pro was provided by uh, Sneak Thief uh, in Berlin who's been uh, providing feedback and comments on the development of this uh, alternative firmware and also helping to, to test it. And uh, he developed this patch which I'll set up uh, in a second. Let's just listen to some of the other. Let's change the cross modulation a bit.
triggers so uh, pluck is not playing Okay, now I'll just set up uh, Sneak Thief's uh, test patch. Uh, just bear with me while I find the exact parameters.
Okay, so that's the basic um, the basic patch, but we're using um, LFO for both mod one and mod two. But uh, Sneak Thief suggested we use uh, envelope for mod one, so I've changed to envelope mode in uh, for modulator one, and of course everything stops because uh, we've got no triggers. So I'll supply a trigger from uh, grids here. Uh, so the grids clock is off, so we'll just bring the grids clock up a bit. And so on. You get the idea.